Max is one very lucky Labrador. His owners have been keeping an extra close eye on their 11-year-old, given he's already undergone several surgeries to remove lumps from his body. One of those, a mast cell tumour, the type with the potential to spread rapidly to other parts of his body. So when Max's owners spotted two weird growths in his mouth that hadn't been there just a few weeks ago, they sought help fast. Animal Referral Hospital surgical specialist Dr Sarah Goldsmith suspected that Max would need major surgery to fix the problem. A CT scan confirming the full extent of the worrying growths. The tumours that we're worried about, obviously this big one growing here, behind the right lower canine. He does have a little um, more benign looking lesion here, but I think we need to deal with both of those. This is the one that's grown really quickly and we're concerned that it you know, you can't just shave it off, it'll just come back most likely. But we need to know what it is, so we could either just take a piece and biopsy it now, but the problem is we still have to operate and we still have to go back and do surgery. Um, most of the oral tumours that we see invade the bone, so if you just shave that off, it'll grow back. We have to actually be a little more aggressive and take the base of that, including the tooth and the bone around the tooth, um, to remove it so that it doesn't come back. So this dog's going to have what we call a rostral mandibulectomy. Uh, so rostral, front bit, mandible, ectomy, so removal. Sorry. Most people are horrified about the thought of that. Dogs are amazing. They cope really well with their teeth and jaw being removed. Um, so we can remove different parts of the jaw, both the top jaw and the bottom jaw. And remarkably, the dogs bounce back the next day. They usually eat straight away. They um, often end up still playing with balls, eating bones, doing all those sort of things eventually. Um, but it's a Labrador, he's going to eat probably when he wakes up. <laughs> um, but they really do cope very well with it. The worst that will probably happen with this is his tongue might hang out of his mouth a little bit more uh, and he might dribble a bit more. But the owner tells me he dribbles when he sees food anyway, so I don't think they'll notice a difference. He seemed quite unfazed by the whole process. Um, so that's the plan today, we're going to just remove the tumour. Which doesn't look so that's exciting, but I'm going to go right across. Yeah about a centimetre behind. Now we may cut through the canine root on this side and then I'll just shell it out yeah. because that way we've still got the bone here so it's going to be yeah, pretty yeah, stable. stable. Not that it matters but it will be. But I think yeah we just do a rostral mandibulectomy. We might need to resect a bit of lip just to make it look beautiful. Yeah. Um, he's got hair up his nose. Okay so um, prepping wise, normal prep under here. Yeah. There's a little warty thing that I can't cope with that's going. <laughs> Normal prep under here, um, just dilute Chlorhex, wipe in the mouth, yeah? Okay. Yeah. okay. But yeah, yeah, and the speed that it's grown. So I think it's appropriate that we um, cut it rather than wait for a histopath, uh, which um, was our two choices. Kathy, she was okay. Okay, so, so they always bleed. And the big thing with these sort of surgeries is that you want to keep moving <laughs> because once you've got it off you can deal with the bleeding very easily but during the middle of it it's very hard so we just want to kind of keep moving to get it off quickly and then we can deal with everything after that knowing the anatomy makes a difference so you know where the major vessels are likely to be okay let's just start cutting and then we'll sort it out Whoops. Done. All right, let's just move that out of the way. So there's the jaw removed with the margin. Now we can deal with any bleeding. So we've still got some canine roots that I'm not going to leave in. We're going to take those out. So I'm just cauterizing any bleeders. Um, there's not too many. We're actually pretty good. <laughs> there's just a little kind of bony ridge there I'm taking off just because it's going to be irritating. All right, so the next bit is the roots that we have to remove. I still think it's better saving all that bone because it mm. cosmetically and functionally is better for the dog than going back behind the roots. But you always have this bit. I don't think I have the patience for dentistry. Okay. 
kind of instant I gratification. Like calculus. calculus. Really? It's quite rewarding. Rewarding, yeah. yeah. He said there weren't babies being born. Yeah. Did we get a... Oh, yeah. You can probably... Oh, tooth baby. Hey. Hey. All right. It's all right, we've got another one to do. Perfect. Do you have the two <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's the leftover bit of the root. You see how big the canine root is? And, you know, I cut a huge amount off of what looked like most of the tooth, but there was still quite a bit of tooth in there. And it's important not to leave any roots in because um, it will cause pain and infection. So you're not going to be able to rip into bones anymore? Oh, sure you will. Because you'll have, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Even if he wasn't, they do remarkably still, you know, yeah. eat things like that. I go, I don't encourage that to start with, but you know, they play ball, they do all sorts of things that you think that would be hard to do. Ah, yeah. oh, yeah. finally! Woo. Oh, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> okay, let's give it a good flush. Hmm. Yeah, we could do that. Maybe I'll just put a suture in the middle so you kind of get a feel for how much. So I'm just editing the lip a little to fit the hole. Okay. You got him? Okay, let's just do this. I think that probably be all right on that side. Let's just sew that bit up while it's bleeding. A um, couple of weeks? Okay. Because it's not, we're not relying on bone healing because we've cut that out. Um, we just need soft tissue healing. So it'll be, it won't be its strongest yet. See, that's the end of that citron. Yeah. Make him look beautiful. As beautiful as a Labrador can look. I've got one, it's all right, I can say that. I can say that because I have one at home. Darkest. Yeah, if you take this off, you'll never know that it had anything done. And if you look from from the side. It just looks like it's one of those dogs with a little bit of a overshot jaw. And um, the tongue's going to hang out a little bit. Are we going on the side or on the front? As it turns out, Max's lumps both turned out to be benign. But removing the section of jaw where they'd grown stops any regrowth, infection or ulceration. Not long after surgery, we check in to see how Max is doing. Uh, I think we got out, was it three quarters of an hour ago? Something like that. Um, and he's sitting up, woofing, probably demanding his lunch because he didn't get fed this morning. I think he's uh, doing the typical Labrador. I want to actually eat something. <laughs> you can see how happy he is. He really um, doesn't look uh, he like he's too, too badly off considering he just had that major surgery. Not so bad, is it? It's not too bad. You're a good boy. Are you a good boy? Do you want some dinner? Is that it? You're starving. <laughs>